So when the market for condominiums is struggling the most, as was the case in uh, November, December, January, where the condo market bottomed out, when that occurs, yet another edition of the weekly condo market update for the Toronto, downtown, midtown, North York, and GTA condo market. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Siberi 6 Real Estate and Remax Real Charm Real Tank. As always, back with another edition of the weekly condo market update. I believe this is the fourth one where I go through sold prices, trends, numbers, and things you should know about this week and covering the basis for last month. Basically just a routine weekly update on the condo numbers that are most key that I think a lot of people need to know about. As always, you can find my contact information in the description box with regards to my Gmail, my Instagram. Go check my Instagram out right now. I just filmed a listing I'm bringing onto the market and follow me if you want. And you can find my contact info with regards to my office as well. Lastly, feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Once again, if you want, you're not obliged to do so. Feel free to do none of those things, actually. Feel free to not like this video, not subscribe, not comment, and don't find my contact info. So having said all that, let's get to the point of today's video, which once again is the weekly condo market update. Today, we're gonna to go through some numbers that usually I'll go through in my monthly TREB resale report. However, that video itself, without even going through major condo numbers, was 17 minutes long. So as I said in that video, and by the way, go check it out if you wanna know numbers with regards to other property types and the general real estate market as well. I do touch on condos in that video as well. But as I said in that video, from now on, I'm gonna cover a lot of numbers in this weekly condo market update. Let's start with the most key number, shall we? First, let's take a look at the city of Toronto at large. So in the previous video and in the video that came out Wednesday, I went through the numbers of the GTA at large, but now let's start with the city of Toronto. So all condo types, uh, not including townhomes, but condominium apartments, uh, in terms of two bedroom to one bedroom to bachelor to penthouses to the cheapest unit in the building on average and median on average the sold price this most recent month that we have complete access to the data which is april 2021 the sold price was seven hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars now that's up about twenty thousand dollars a month over month which the preceding month we're comparing to is March of 2021, wherein the average price in the city of Toronto, so taking into account Etobicoke, to Scarborough, to Midtown, to Downtown, to North York, basically the entirety of the city of Toronto in March 2021, the average price was $707,000. So this $20,000 increase can be chalked up to partially speaking seasonal. Uh, so this occurs when I say seasonal, this occurs any other year really there's there's a seasonal a trait to the real estate market i mean although this is the toronto real estate market and prices are forever increasing increasing and increasing uh that's not actually the trajectory of things month to month certain months prices dip a bit certain months uh, things go up you have a winter market you have a summer market you have a spring market we're in the spring market right now however this twenty thousand dollar increase in average price is in sharp contrast to other property types where other property types plateaued they didn't necessarily fall in prices uh, although some did but very minuscule amounts but on average all the other property types pretty much plateaued in price and condominiums now are the only property type when we do this month-to-month -month analysis that actually increased in price and this is reflected in the city of toronto but the thing the only thing that dipped was the number of transactions right uh, so in march although prices were once again at seven hundred seven thousand dollars on average uh there was only there was rather 2700 or i believe 2600 transactions wherein in april of 2021 the most recent month we have complete access to the sales data the number of transactions was 2200 now when prices increase and the number of transactions dip that is a sure sign of a commodity becoming a little bit more scarce but demand increasing uh, or staying the same but in this case increasing so what does that mean it means that a lot of inventory was moved and uh, a lot of inventory was moved that is no longer available so what remaining inventory is available is being met with the same amount of demand when inventory was abundant in some cases even more demand because I, as i discussed in the past 
we have seen a shift of freehold buyers uh, basically coming to the condo market because they're being priced out of the freehold market. Needless to say the demand is still there, but inventory is slowing down. And this is not just for this condo market, but as we went through in the previous video, it's for all the other property types as well. Now, if we look at York region at large, once again, not just looking at one municipality such as Vaughan, Richmond Hill, but the entirety of York region, which is comprised of, yes, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Markham, and all the other areas. Uh, when we do the same analysis, we see the average sold price this month was $667,000, whereas the average sold price the previous month was $630,000. And once again, although prices increase, as is the case with Toronto, York region, the number of transactions dipped. Uh, so similar type of trend here. However, it was a far less of a dip. The number of transactions dipped from 440-ish to 330 uh, because there's less inventory in the first place, right? It's, uh, York region, even though it, geographically speaking, in terms of surface area, it's a larger landmass, but you know, it's not as concentrated with condominiums. The majority of the transactions of this 330 this month or 400 last month or any other month are occurring in Vaughan and Richmond Hill because that's where the most condo rich areas are along with Markham in York region. Now, before we continue with Toronto, let's stay in York region and actually break down Markham, Vaughan and Richmond Hill. Where in Markham, the average sold price was $694,000. In Vaughan, we saw an average of $675,000. And in Richmond Hill, we saw a average of $628,000. As I've always said to my clients within the last three to four months, if you're buying for immediate cash flow purposes, York region, specifically Vaughan and Richmond Hill, are the best areas to do so, to purchase for immediate cash flow purposes. Whereas, con in contrast, if you're buying for yourself and you wanna live in it for a year to two years, even five years, whatever it may be, but down the line you may want to rent it out, Toronto, at least given the market conditions right now, uh, is a better option. Now that's actually slowly starting to change. As I said, I have been providing this uh, uh, opinion for the last four to three months. Um, so it has held strong, but now since uh, the rental market is also recovering just a tiny bit in Toronto, that analysis, that in terms of uh, breaking them down separately into York region versus city of Toronto in terms of where to purchase for immediate cash flow, that analysis will change as the coming months uh, come to fruition and things open up a bit more, but it still stands strong as of the recording of this video. In summary, once again, for immediate cash flow purposes, Richmond Hill, Markham, Vaughan are much better than the city of Toronto, assuming you know a reasonable amount of down payment. If you're obviously gonna put down 100% down by all cash or 80% down, that changes uh, you know, the, 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 the changes the scenario. Anyways, now let's move back to the city of Toronto and break it down by east, west, and central. Let's look at the prices in central Toronto, western Toronto, and eastern Toronto. And as you can see on the screen, uh, this is the same thing it's always been when we do this uh, breakdown of east, west, and central. Central Toronto is always the most expensive. Western Toronto, in, in terms of average prices, is always the second most expensive, and eastern is always the cheapest options are in the eastern portion of the city, uh, where the average prices are the least interesting thing is when we compare the average prices of west east and central the month over month uh, the same thing applies however uh, west and eastern toronto saw the most smallest and marginal and almost negligible jumps in prices whereas the city of toronto saw the biggest jump about 30k in prices why is this the case well as i always say the more central south you get, so it's more south central, uh, so obviously downtown being the prime example of that, very much so central, very much so south. You can't get any more central or south than downtown, but this always also applies to midtown, but obviously it applies to midtown less than downtown, and same thing with North York. It applies to North York, but less than it applies to midtown and downtown. You get the idea. Point is, the more central, the more south you get, the more volatile the condominium market becomes and it's good or and bad. When there is a depression in prices, so when the market for condominiums is struggling the most, as was the case in uh, November, December, January, where the condo market bottomed out, when that occurs, prices in central and southern Toronto drop the most. However, when there's a bullish market for condominiums, 
meaning there's a lot of excitement and the condominiums are increasing in price and the market is recovering for condos that's where the prices jump up the most so basically when you say volatile what we mean is due to the sheer number of inventory and the sheer amount of demand investor and end user uh, what occurs is basically a very volatile market where the prices drop the most in those areas when there is a downturn in the market but when there is a very positive market the prices increase the most there as well so moving on from the east west to central let's just stay with central and stay to downtown toronto where we see and we're designating downtown toronto as c1 and c8 uh, basically c1 is central toronto central downtown toronto rather and then c8 is the easternmost uh, part of downtown toronto and if you're uh, familiar with the codes that's great if you're not uh, go take a look in the link in the description there are treb maps and that should explain to you what these codes stand for and what areas they designate so when we look at downtown prices we see that c1 came in at eight hundred and two thousand dollars and c8 came in at seven hundred and forty thousand dollars and once again this is average across all property types and in the case of c1 we saw this is an increase represents an increase month over month of twenty four thousand dollars so safe to say as you can see thus far from this report prices pretty much increased all over with regards to condominiums and if you contrast this video with my previous video you'll see that uh, condos are now outpacing all property types uh, where all other property types kind of plateaued but condominiums have made their steady comeback and they continue to increase in prices and make the return to uh, levels we saw last year early last year um, and then when i say early last year i mean february and january exclusively so what is there to say about uh, june and may and going forward well i think there will be a plateau coming for the condo market actually uh around june so when we look at may prices i don't think prices will be as high as they are in they were in april and in march not to say prices will fall but i think they will kind of plateau if not for the may report definitely for the june report i would have to say so what we're pretty much seeing with the freehold uh, portion of the market right now that's going to occur as i'm saying either may but maybe even june uh so anyways that's today's video let me know if you have any further questions feel free to contact me my contact information is in the description box with regards to my gmail my instagram and my office lastly feel free to subscribe comment rate and review if you happen to enjoy this video thank you very much for watching